you don't have enough, you should be further along, so what? So what? Yeah. You get to make it to tomorrow, you get up, you try again tomorrow, and you learn the lessons from the day before, um, and you figure out why it didn't work yesterday, and you try to make it work again today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Let's Give a Damn podcast. My name is Nick. I'm your host, your pal, and this is my chance to sit down with people who are giving a damn. Talk with them, tease out their stories, help pull stuff from their stories that we can learn from. It's a fantastic time. I love doing it. Thank you for joining me. Today is a fun one. Today is a fun conversation with my friend, Kareem Manuel used to be a hip hop artist, used to be a lot of things. As you'll hear in the story, he's been all over the place. He's worked in several different industries. He is an amazing man, an amazing father, an amazing husband, someone that I've known for quite a few years now. And we caught up on the road. He was in Knoxville. He's on Lecrae's tour right now as manager of one of the artists and a couple other things on the tour. So we met up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, And literally, so I showed up at the venue to find a place. And obviously it's three hours before a hip hop show. So they were sound checking and doing all sorts of stuff. So there was nowhere that we could find that was quiet enough. So we walked outside. We found a quiet-ish spot under a bridge. Yes, under a bridge. While we were recording, cars drove by, uh, little mopeds drove by, people walked by and a train even came by. And you're not gonna believe this. I think we're gonna cut it out as as much as we can. But this train pulls up, stops a couple hundred feet from us. You can still hear it loudly. And then it backs up. So it comes to a complete stop, doesn't pass us, and then takes another three or four minutes backing up the way it came, and then it disappeared out of sight. So I'm not really sure what it was doing, but um, yeah, that happened. So this was a special conversation, uh, a little noisy, but I think you all are going to learn a ton from Kareem. Just an amazing man, gives all the dams, and you're gonna see a few of those, you're gonna hear about a few of those ways today in our conversation. So I'm going to shut up. It is time for you to hear my conversation with my good friend, my pal, Kareem Manuel. Here you go. What's up, everybody? Uh, I am here in Knoxville, Tennessee, sitting under a bridge, literally sitting under a bridge, under an overpass. We don't, I can't find a room to do this interview. And I'm with my buddy, Kareem Manuel. Welcome. What's up, man? How you feeling? I am well. Thank you. And we'll see how this turns out. I've yeah. never done one just literally sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Hey, man, we get it done. But you it's going to be fun. So oh, yeah. Kareem's in town for, he's on a tour right now with Lecrae and a bunch of other artists there in Knoxville at the International so we are, yeah, we just, we couldn't find something in the venue, obviously, because that would be a lot noisier. And we're out here under, uh, under the bridge. So let's do it. We're under a bridge or we're on some rocks. Either way, it feels really good. Either, I feel great. It feels like great. It's, it's a wonderful autumn day. Yep. The sun's, it's shining on us, but it doesn't feel. Yeah, no, this is literally perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Great. So let's do this. All right, man. How are you? I'm great. We haven't, Kareem and I are really good friends, yep. but we haven't seen each other in probably three years. Yes. Um, we've been, all of, we've been everywhere. And now he and his family moved to Atlanta, mm-hmm. and um, I'm glad that we got to like meet up here in I know, Knoxville. I know we're gonna catch up yeah. in front of everyone. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I'm, I, everybody will be fine with that. Yeah, yeah. So let's do this. So we're on the Let's Give a Damn podcast. You know that, and we're gonna get to why I specifically asked you to be on this with your whole We project, and I'm so excited to share that with the listeners. But let's start with your story. All right. Let's begin with go back as far as you want to. Okay. You can go back all the way to the beginning. Point out circumstances, stories, people situations in your life that formed who you are today they made you the person you are today Ooh, let's see i was born in new york but i only say that for a little bit we moved from new york to valdosta georgia okay so that's a big change yeah queens new york to an air force base in valdosta then from there to cleveland tennessee where my mom went to college and then chicago illinois when i was seven years old so from zero to seven i had lived in like immigrants, people of color, you know, everybody to all white, 
all white back to people of color hood. So I never fit in anywhere. Right. Right. And I used to look at that as a, I don't know, um, a hindrance, not knowing like who am I, where do I sure. belong? But what I learned in that time was how to make friends, mm. how to learn different types of perspectives and ways of viewing things, how to talk to people where they are. And, and I became almost like a, a studier of culture because, you know, I'm always the new guy. You had guy. to. Yeah, you yeah. were always moving. Always. Um, so just that I think kind of helps me now and like who I am today is definitely like a bridge builder, an understander of people and movements and what's going on. And I I think it was like forged in those, you know, zero to seven years of just trying to figure out where I was and who I was and what's going on. Uh, And so now fast forward, I'm 31 now. And it's like all those tools, tips, tricks I still use almost every day of my life. And I don't know if if I ever even would have thought about it if you didn't ask that question right now. There you go. So. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you from Chicago. So right. were, you, were you there from seven till S- two seven years till ago? I, two, till I moved two years ago. Yeah, I moved two, about two and a half years ago to Atlanta. Tell me about growing up in Chicago, right? Because we have um, uh, <laughs> a, a president right now who Saying, likes to point out how yeah. shitty things are and it's yep. bad and we need to send the yeah. military in there and all. So, but I, everybody, I, and I know it's difficult, but I, everybody I know from there is amazing. Like yeah. it's an, it's a hard, amazing Midwest city yep. that has really birthed some, some amazing some people. Some greatness. Some greatness. Yeah. I think Chicago is both of those things. It's like a tale of two cities. It's, um, you know, I grew up in a place that was dangerous and rough and violent. You know, it was, it was. I've had guns pulled on me. I've, I've been in fights. I've had to know what gangs were having a, mm. a beef at which time and which streets were safe to go on. But at the exact same time, there was so much love around you and people were helping keep you safe and people, you know, willing to let you stay in their house until your parents got home or after school programs. I went to an, uh, an incredible school thanks to my parents called Beasley. Uh, I went to school with a kid named Derek Rose who took my spot on the basketball team. Of course he did. Uh, I was in eighth grade. He was in fifth grade and he took my spot because he was that good. Um, but like that's that's what Chicago was like. Like, you know, I hung out with Barack Obama uh, and wrote his theme song when he was running for U.S. Senate when I was like 16 years old. Is that old. true? That's a very That's true That's a story. real story. Yeah. He went to uh, Ashley, my wife's high school, to let her interview him for a school paper. Um, but he's just a cool guy. And then, you know, he became president. Yeah. And that's kind of cool, too. Yeah. So Chicago has, like, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful memories for, for me. Mm. Uh, it can be dangerous, but it's just because people are poor and desperate and, and stacked on top of each other. And... I believe there was a systemic uh, movement to arrest all of the leaders and put them all in jail. So you got these young guys out here with no leadership, no chance to make money. Once you go to jail and you get out, I've I created a company before I moved to Atlanta that hired ex-convicts to re um, to recycle pallets because they couldn't get a job anywhere else. Hmm. So it's like if you can't if you go to jail now you have to check a box that says yep. you're a criminal. You get out. You don't want to do that anymore. But no one wants to hire you because yep. you, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I literally know guys from my block who just were standing there, you know, and get arrested again because they're in the wrong space at the wrong time. And now they're back in jail. So it's like the second time going to jail. So, well, fuck it then. If I'm going to keep going, I yeah. might as well. That's Chicago. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's Harvard recently said it's the most corrupt city in the country. And Illinois is the third most corrupt state in the country. Um, so you do have that. But you have wonderful people who just they just want to give their families a chance. And yeah. So what's it going to take? I know we're kind of jumping right into things here. But what, in your opinion, yeah. you lived there for 20 plus years. What what fixes Chicago? Man. Shit. It's an amazing city. Yeah. So much there. And parts of I mean, like, yeah, Chicago has so much to offer. Just culture, food. Living in Atlanta is hard without the food like chicago you could throw a rock and find a great restaurant yeah. you know authentic uh full of immigrants i can go to little mexico little italy koreatown chinatown you know i honestly think just people giving a damn really like people were saying you know what yeah i'm going to create this project that's going to help these people have a chance to go to a better school or these people to get reacclimated into society right now it feels like people have let go of chicago and so everything's spiraling down and people are kind of just watching it burn or hoping that it burns so they can swoop in and buy things for cheap and, sure. you know, all that type of stuff. And it's like 
we can't have that. I think if people cared enough to fight, go in, reinvest in a way that helps the indigenous people that live there, that help the people that have been there struggling and fighting for years and years, I think you'll see some changes. But you send in tanks in the National Guard and, you know, keep tweeting about it, it's just going to get worse. Yeah, absolutely. In my opinion. So talk to me about your family, mom, yeah. dad, siblings, and did they help you or hinder you from becoming who you are today? Ooh, I thought it was a hindrance at first. Mm. Um, sure. My dad definitely pushed me a lot. Uh, my dad's a genius. My mom's an educator, also a genius. Uh, so I was reading her high school. She was a high school English teacher. I was reading her curriculum for her students when I was in fourth and fifth grade. You know, I hated that. Uh, but as I grew and saw how well prepared I was for the next level of things, I started to become more appreciative. And now as an adult, I see it so clearly what they were mm. trying to do. But I definitely felt stifled. Like, you know, I'm not good enough. You guys don't appreciate who I am. And that, I don't think that was the case. I just I was too immature to see the battles I was going to have. And they knew that I don't know. They knew how to tell me what battles I was going to have, but they knew what it was like to be black in America, to be a man in you know this town. And uh, they helped me a lot in terms of like, we love you no matter who you are, no matter what. Uh, so I felt that I just didn't feel it in the actions all the time until, like I, like I said, I got older and looked back. Like, oh, that's why I had to study so hard, or why I always had to speak in front of people, or why I always had to make the right decision. You know, um, so my parents are great. Uh, my dad still lives in Chicago. He works in politics in Chicago, trying to help change the city. My mom recently moved down to Atlanta to live with me. Okay. Uh, my younger sister moved down to Atlanta to live with me. My wife's father moved down to Atlanta to live with me. Um, my middle sister and her husband. I hope I'm gonna move down. I'm trying to get us all to cluster together and like pool our resources, our ideas, our strategies. Let's own businesses together. Let's buy property that. together. Let's, you know, we're the ones we're waiting for. And if we if we wait on other people to take care of us, we're going to be up a creek without a paddle. I love it. Really fast. Yeah. And we're going to get there in one second. Yeah, with yeah no the problem. No, I love it. No I problem. Love it. Quick question. Yeah. So you have two boys. Two boys. Seven and five. Seven and five. Mm -hmm. What's it like? Um, what's it like raising? two black boys in America. So you were, they were birthed in Chicago, yep. right? Which is a much different environment than Atlanta. Yes. Then you moved them to the South, mm -hmm. which there's a lot of black people in, in, in Atlanta, yeah. right? But it's still the South. It like is the South still is Georgia. the South. Georgia. It's still yeah. Georgia. Mm -hmm. So what's it like now? Is there five and seven? They're in school. They're getting out and about more. Tell me a little it's bit like about this. that. My son, Nathan, comes to me yesterday and goes, Dad, I have three girls in my class I like. They're all white. Am I allowed? And it's like, yeah, you're allowed to love and like, you know, whoever, whoever, like we're all God's children. So having to say to him, Nathan, what I'm about to say to you has nothing to do with you. This is hundreds of years in the making. You were just born for the last seven years. This is not about you. But there was a time where black people weren't even allowed to talk to white people. They weren't even allowed to look, look to them. Having to talk to them about Emmett Till. I didn't show any pictures or anything like that, but I'm saying there's a boy from Chicago who came to the South and whistled not a white girl and got murdered and thrown in a river. And so you have to know that you're, you have to know that you're stepping into that, um, that other people are going to look and have questions, concerns, thoughts, uh, her family, us as a family. Uh, and so again, affirming he is his own person. He's autonomous. He could, and God created us all. I don't believe that we're different. Our society has made us live different. So how do you respond to that? And I don't have a good answer, but that's the difficulties of saying, like to a seven year old, sure. how do I explain the last 700 years? And even now to a guy who's seven, is just like, man, she's nice. Mm. Like he, he said, she's loyal, she's kind. She's, mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, you, you seven, you don't know, you know? Um, so it's like, I believe love wins, but he has to know where he comes from and where we are. And I don't want that to sabotage him moving forward. And that's, I mean, those are some of the difficulties and the challenges that we're wrestling through like right now, like as early as yesterday, trying to say like, how do we respond to this in a way that yeah. affirms him and this, this young girl who also has nothing to do with anything that's going on right now or has gone on for the last couple hundred years. Like she, she didn't ask to be here. She didn't ask for this to happen. She's just in second grade, you know? Um, and so I was like, am I ruining it by exposing him to this? Or am I helping him? Am I hurting him? I don't want him to be prejudiced or racist in any type of way. So it's, 
it can be difficult, but my, my boys are some of the best children I could ever hope and pray to have. Like they just, at the end of it, he was just like, dad, I hear what you're saying. I think I should try to start liking black girls as well. And that's what I'll commit to. And I was like, yeah, man, you can like whoever you want. That's cool, I appreciate that. And always feel free to come to me and talk to me. He was like, I will. And we gave a pound and that was it. And I was like, I hope that was a good, <laughs> I hope that was a good conversation. You yeah. Know? That's I think where, it was. That's where we are. Yeah, I love it. Thanks. It's difficult though in the South. Oh my goodness. So and we we, we could talk we could talk for two hours on that. You've you how long you been in Atlanta? Two and a half years. Okay, and we've been in my, my family and I have been in the South for gosh, a year, year and a half now. And it's been in some ways the most difficult year and a half. I grew up in Guatemala, dude. I know. Like fucking war torn Guatemala yep. and being here, just some of the things that I've encountered, some of the the things that I've heard being said, and it's 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 difficult. It's terrible. It's difficult, uh, but we have to be here, right? If we're gonna be here, we have to be here. We have to here, be here and, and not just to, exist. Yep. You know, I want to impact here. Yeah. So, so was uh, this this podcast is all about talking with people who give a damn? Yeah. Giving a damn for you was it a gradual thing that happened, or was there a moment in your life when it just hit you right in the face? So I've always given a damn. I didn't know what to give a damn about. In okay. fourth grade, I organized a protest of all of the fourth grade students. Uh, hold on, I'll let him pass. Oh my gosh. Those guys in these little loud mopeds, they, they were like a mile and a half away. I know, they just and want everybody I had my to... windows up in my car and I could still hear them. I'm sorry, everybody that's listening. This is a good conversation. I hope you feel the same way I do about <laughs> it. But the reality is we're out under a bridge. Yeah. Yeah, um, um, yeah so I organized a protest in fourth grade. I thought the food and the lunch lunchroom sucked and we weren't and gonna, did. we weren't going to eat anymore until we got quality food that was who i was you know i always wanted to be about righting wrongs and justice for all people the problem is i didn't even realize how i was being unjust to so many people mm. i didn't realize my own misogyny sexism uh classism nationalism sure. right like you just you just grow up i told somebody today it felt like january 1st it felt like waking up and realizing you were a stormtrooper it's like you've been in this fight and you yep. think you're fighting for the right side yep. and then you go like, oh, okay, you're an asshole. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so that's what happened to me. And I'll just tell you, I, I mean, I'm sure this has happened to a lot of people, but when, Bar when Barack Obama ran for president and the outcry against him from my friends mm. and the people I was close to happened, that shocked me. That was like the mm. first shockwave. It was like, here's this person who they're calling the Antichrist. I'm like, he's been married to this woman for how many years? Faithfully. No like, scandals. And like, I know him. Like, he loves her. Like, I know, I've, at least as much as a teenager can be around, I've been around marriages. So I'm like, that guy is a jerk or she does not care about him at all. Right. You can tell. I'll be around them. and I'm like, man, they genuinely love each other. Good father. Multiple degrees from Harvard. All these things. And he's the Antichrist. And yeah. so you're like, okay. Then this other guy shows up. And Donald Trump, and you're like, no, he's, that seems evil. And those same people are like, no, that's like Jesus. Yeah. That, like. That's difficult. That, that shook me. And then when I saw just, when he came down the escalator and my wife turned to me and she goes, there's the next president. This is when he announced. I'm like, no way. She's like, Kareem, this is America. Like, that's an American president. Wow. She said that. She said right that. Right from the beginning. That from the beginning. When he said Mexico sending their rapists and their drug dealers, and we need to build a wall, and we need to kick them out. She was like, Kareem, when has America ever done anything different than that? And I was like, oh, my God. And Actually so, smart. Oh, yeah. She's I, wise. I definitely married up. Yeah. I definitely married no, up. No, but that's so intuitive to like see that because I didn't. Nobody did. Uh, up until the very last moment, literally yeah. going to bed at 1 in the morning, the vote's still coming in, and I just fell, fell asleep because I couldn't keep it. Like, there's no way that I believed that we'd wake up the next morning. And it was oh, no, she knew from then. She knew and she the was beginning. telling everybody who would listen, and she convinced me about a month into it. I was like, oh, no, you're right. And when he beat, our, what it was, the 16 candidates, oh, gosh. Um, who all at least tried to make sense, and he's just making stuff up as he goes. So, again, not to, I don't even care about bashing him. I'm sure. answering your question of that was the final shock wave that was like, I can't wait anymore for some other system, thought process, philosophy to come and take care of my family. It was, it was my children are going to have the exact same fears and conversations that me and my friends are having mm -hmm. right now that our parents had and their parents had before them if we don't do something different now and i can't my different can't just be yelling at you right um and hoping you'll respond to my tweet i can't that's not enough my 
my my sons 20 years from now are going to be around the table and going wait a minute you're cutting funding to our schools wait a minute we can't afford to live here anymore like i have you know so that was my giving a damn it, i always wanted to i just didn't know what about um and so i was ready to fight anything and now I, i'm much less fight but i'm more focused on what i want to see changed if that makes any sense I want to take a quick break to talk about a few amazing people that sponsor this podcast with monthly financial contributions. Want to know who I'm talking about? It's you. Seriously, many of you support the work we are doing on this podcast by contributing monthly on a platform called Patreon. Some give a dollar a month, some give five, some give 10, and some even give $25 a month. And what is so surprising to me is that the largest chunk of people giving give at the $25 level. I'm not even joking. So if you love these stories, consider helping us. No pressure, really. I will always find a way to produce these podcasts, to pay the people involved in making these podcasts, because I want you to hear them. But if you have a few extra dollars every month and want to help us make more of these, we will not say no. Visit patreon.com forward slash let's give a damn for more info. That's P A T R E O N.com forward slash let's give a damn for more info. Talk for a minute about your career trajectory <laughs> and, and how it led and, and finish with going right into we. Yeah. Right. So you've been a lot of things and now you're you've started this movement and organization that yep. I really want to get to. So again, much props to my mom and dad. My dad, if we needed extra money, he would go to Chinatown, buy wholesale uh, balloons, like uh, Incredible Hulk, baseball bats, things like that. We would blow them up and we would go to downtown Chicago and we would sell them for a dollar, two dollars and make a couple hundred bucks. Mm. Um, and he, he would just tell me like, Kareem, you always have a tool. You always have something in your hand you can use to take care of your family. Um, and so I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I, I used to rap uh, and I did that for a while, fairly successfully. Um, I was a pastor of a house church uh, in Chicago for some years. I uh, started a video company and we did some music videos and some promo videos and corporate videos for people. I started the Palette company with a, a friend of mine named Brad Folk in Chicago, hiring ex-convicts and partnering with this company called Kehi. Uh, which does food distribution and it's like I always just wanted to learn I wanted to learn and grow to know how businesses worked and how to help people by running the business I didn't want to just be rich although that is definitely in a, go a goal of mine sure uh, I didn't want to just do that so how can I help as many people as possible how can I put them in good situations all of that came to a head um, when I moved to Atlanta to try to do college ministry with the organization and uh, I was sitting in my room January 1st, you know, just crying, upset, because I realized what I realized about where we were, it was all happening exactly like I thought mm -hmm. it was. And I was like, that's terrible. And I remember screaming out loud, just saying like, when are you gonna come do something about this? When are you gonna come fix this? And I felt like I heard a voice go like, well, what are you doing? You were just saying that into the air. Yeah, just, it, just, just out, yeah, loud, out loud, like, just loud. like, you know, to God, the universe, to my my mom, any you know, yeah. I'm mad at everybody. Right. You know, I'm everything. It's just like this is not right. When is when is somebody gonna come fix this? Sure. And it was just like, when are you? I was like, oh, I'm who I'm waiting for. Like, I gotta get to work. Where, yep. You know. So that became the thing. And so for me, we is now like a production house. I manage an artist and. Uh, will some other artists through there we do apparel we just want to inspire as many people to take up their cause and be an influence for change in whatever world they exist in whether it's the globe or just their job or their family like uh, helping your family see why somebody might want to kneel during the Star Spangled Banner as opposed to stand up or why somebody might have a problem with uh, things that the president says and does you know, if, even if you just help your mother or sure. your father see that better, like you can be that type of influence and change. And so that's what the company we is all about. Uh, is that gonna be too loud? <laughs> I think a train's about to go by. 
Uh, can you hear it in your headphones? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I can't. I can't really tell. Let's see here. Um, yeah, we that's can pause. gonna be too loud. Let's you just pause. pause. All right, we'll pause and we'll uh, keep it going. Okay, we're taking a break here. This is a friggin' train in the background. Because <laughs> we just made, we just made a bridge our studio. This is like, I'm breaking all of the podcast rules, but I just don't care. Can you just edit this out? Yeah, I mean, I'll edit it out. Well, maybe. You might. Love I'll edit the, some of it out. You might love the character. I'll edit some of it out, but maybe I'll keep it. <laughs> is he gonna stop? Tell me he's gonna stop right here. That'd be perfect, though, right? Actually, it would be. Yo, I'll take it. Let's go. Come on now. Let's just go. Let's just go. Yeah. Um, so where were you? So that's what we, we yeah. is. We are the ones waiting for, and it's a company that wants to produce products that help people produce things in the world to impact it for good. Um, and that's it kind of in a nutshell. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So you have the shirts out, which everyone should go get. Yeah, thank you. Right? Yep. Um, and the artists. And kind of what's the... What would be if you could snap your fingers and your wildest dream comes true? Is it just a bigger version of this, or are there oh no, other- it's a it's it's a like I said, a production house. We want to do films. Uh oh, going backwards. What too is he too far up? Yeah, he is. This is amazing. This is the best interview ever. People are gonna say this is your fa- their favorite interview. I hope so. Well, because of you, not because of the freaking train. Not just be like, you was so real. It was so real. It was so real. You just so got raw. Just, so gorilla style. So hip hop. Yeah. It is. It's hip hop. It's punk rock. It's. It's true. It's all of it. We're literally sitting on rocks. Outside of a venue, we're getting ready to do a concert in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, hopefully, somebody's gonna hear this and grow up and change the world. That's right. Train's almost gone, people. Okay. All right. Now so we're good. if I could imagine it being anything, what would I imagine? Honestly, so we, the shirt says we period for a reason. It means it's all of us, right? Not just me and people who yep. look like me and you. It's we, period. A rising tide should raise all the ships. If I'm being successful and you're not, something's wrong yep. in my opinion. Yep. And so the vision for it, honestly, is like I want to have a house where I'm helping other entrepreneurs run their businesses under the we society yeah um so like my artist like 1k few i'm managing him he owns his own llc and the deal he has with reach is his deal like his company signed with reach i help manage it so people can come blow out big picture next 20 years if you're an artist you come to us and we have legal we have management we might have like a label type situation. If you're a clothing designer, you come here and you'll be able to cross and match and find people who can help you design and create your clothes. You have dreams for other products. We want to be able to help get the type of resource and tools you need in your hands to do whatever you feel like you're here to do to help impact and change the world. Um, we don't want to be too broad, too broad and too big. My focus obviously is art and media. That's kind of like my my bread and butter yeah uh so that's the dream but who knows you know who knows what it'll be down the road but that's where i'm focused at is is film television music uh and clothing and helping as many like just quality rebellious we're gonna love people no matter what people that i can grow as well as stable and as big as humanly possible to influence as many people as we can to do good in the world that's the dream it's a fantastic dream. I appreciate it. The people listening to this podcast want to give a damn. That's yeah. why they're here listening. Mm-hmm. Give us, based on your experience, your life, the things you're learning, um, give us some advice. Yeah. Give us one, two, three pieces of advice, ways that they can get off their butts and get right to work. now and get to work. Yeah. One, don't listen to advice. Perfect. So, and I mean that, it sound, like, it's kind of tongue in cheek, but I had to stop listening to right. people. Every time I go to somebody, I thought it was a good idea, you know, something was a good idea, people would tell you what they would do if they were in your position. But they aren't you. Nope. They don't have your upbringing, they don't have your history, they don't have your passion, your drive, or whatever it is. So you can't listen to that. When I, if I go, I mean, even people who mean well, fear can overtake them, they, they come from a different financial background, whatever the case may be, I, I had to stop listening to people and trust my own instinct, my own, and Donald Trump taught me that to be honest. It's like, you know what? How I feel, fuck you. 
this is what I think, and this is what I feel. Yep. I feel like these people should have a chance. I feel like the, these kids deserve to go to a quality school. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like these people deserve quality food. And I don't care if you tell me all the reasons why we can't figure out how to get it to them. Fuck you. Yes, we can. I, I, I'm not gonna stop until I do. Because if I listen to you, then I'll just go, yeah. oh, well, that's just the system. Yep, so, that's how it works. Yeah, that's just how it goes. We didn't make it like this. It just is like this. It's like, nah, forget that. I'm going to try to figure it out. That's one. Second advice, listen to advice. Don't be ignorant and stupid. People have already invented the wheel. If you can listen to them and see how they did it and add your sauce to it, then great. So instead of me going, uh, how do I create something out of nothing and start from zero, I went to people I trusted, people who were uh, doing things, people I thought were in a place I would like to be. Uh, I researched, I, 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 I listened to podcasts that I trust. Um, and so on one hand, don't listen to advice. On the other hand, do listen to advice. Don't think you have to be out there starting over from scratch. I can, and I, I honestly, I think once you find that sweet spot for you, that was that's kind of my secret sauce is I listen to people, but I trust my heart first and foremost. Mm. Uh, I sharpen my ideas with other people's ideas. Uh, and I know I'm running my lane, and so that's it. And then three, uh, you can't quit. Like you asked me to enumerate all my career choices. Yeah. You have a similar story. Yeah. Anybody who's successful, I feel like, has yeah. a similar. You can't give up. You can pivot. You can change. Like I don't have a video company anymore. I'm not doing the palettes, but I couldn't give up trying to be who I am. Yeah. Uh, and it gets it, it gets lonely and it gets depressing sometimes when you're like, I feel like I should be further along. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like I don't have what it takes. You're probably right. You don't it's know true. what you're doing. You don't have enough. You should be further along. So what? So, so what? Yeah. You get to make it to tomorrow, you get up, you try again tomorrow, and you learn the lessons from the day before, um, and you figure out why it didn't work yesterday, and you try to make it work again today. In my opinion, I, and that's with this company, one of the reasons why it's going so well, in my opinion, this time as opposed to all the other ones, I made a conscious decision. I didn't care what was happening. I didn't care how I felt. I didn't care how much money was in the bank. I didn't care what people thought about it. Every single day, I was going to get up and try to move forward towards my goals. It didn't matter how much I was crying the night before. It didn't matter how, 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 how poor I thought I was, how angry I was at everything. I was going to keep moving. And that was probably the best decision I ever, I ever made because there were so many times I quit, right? When if I would have given it one more push, that opportunity comes. Mm. I mean, opportunities like literally, I, I was in my bed talking with my wife four weeks ago Four weeks ago, I'm in the bed and something bad had happened. And she's like, babe, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know, but it'll be fine. She's like, how can you be so calm? I was like, bad stuff happens all the time. Yeah. All the time. And we're still here. As I'm in the middle of telling her why I'm not worried, how opportunities are all out there and we just have to be listening, my phone rings. And it was like, hey, do you want to travel to Uganda to do this thing? And I'm like, I love Uganda. I just told her two months ago I wanted to go back to Uganda. And it was like, I didn't even have to do anything. Like the, the seeds had already been planted and that just came to me. And so don't listen to people, but learn from people and don't quit. Keep moving and magical things happen. That's my advice. And really it's not magic because, I mean, I understand the sentiment there, yep. but the idea is you have to get moving you have to. for those things to happen. I, I look at it like I'm a gardener. I garden. I'm, I'm vegan or whatever and I garden. I like to try to control my own food. All I can do is try to create the best possible environment yeah. for growth to happen. Yep. I get good soil. I try to get good seed. I water it. I put it in a good place to get good sun. I can't make it grow nope. any faster. Nope. No matter how much I'm looking at it and going, come on now, come on, let's get, I want some fruit. I want to see what the fruit of my labor is going to take however long it takes. Yep. I can't do anything about that. All I can do is control the things that I can control and hope that that's enough. Believe that that's enough. Talk to qualified farmers and say, hey, how do you grow? How do you deal with season change and blah, blah, blah. That's the same thing. If you're at home or you're in your car, like these people pulling up next to us, and you're like, I want to I wanna do something, it's like you start planting seeds, you start watering those seeds, you start learning about better techniques and tips to do it, uh, but you can't quit, you know, and just watch the fruit grow from that, and you'll be pleasantly surprised when harvest comes. Yeah, uh, your first and second pieces of advice I think are really important because it's not a contradiction at all. It's finding the sphere of influence that you want to have. Yep. It's finding the people that you want to learn from, that you, people that you trust, yep. that you would trust with your life. 
listen to what they have to say because they're trustworthy. They, they, their, their advice and their lives and their work have stood the test of time and just latch onto that. But everybody else, you, we get onto Twitter, we get onto Facebook, we get onto whatever, and we can just, we, we, can, we can listen to so many lies, so many bad pieces of advice. Yep. And we have to figure out how to shut that off or else we're never going to be successful. At all. At all. At all. I agree. I had to figure out who I was. If I listened to even my parents, I was going to be messed up. Yeah. If I listened to their advice, what they taught me how to think critically, how to do for myself, I had to use that. But if I listened to, okay, so because of this, you should do this, you should do X, I had to throw that out. Don't tell me what to do. I'll figure out what to do with my sphere of influence. But who I am, because who I am is different. So me and my father could be in the same predicament. We will have two different solutions on what to do. Neither one is right or wrong. His way is great for him. My way is great for me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I had to learn that. So it's like, oh, I want to listen to this guy because I love him. And he has he has an influence over my life in a position of authority. And, and, and he's my father. And it's like, OK, but it's eventually and we have great conversations about this. It's like, but I'm not him. I don't view the world the same way. I don't have the same emotional makeup. I don't have the same uh, risk, uh, either aversion or or propensity to take risk. So because of that, he's going to he's going to process the information to go. I think my solution should be this answer and i'll go something totally different you have to be willing to be that person whoever you are and be by yourself for a while uh, but everybody who i look up to who has done anything similar to what i want to do has all said the same thing like you're just you're gonna be alone because nobody else sees what you see right and then you show them and then everybody goes oh oh yeah uh oh what role does uh if any does faith play in the work that you're doing yeah yeah you mentioned you were a pastor of a house church mm -hmm. and all of that i think for me it's everything like it influences all of what i do my faith says i'm supposed to love everybody and that god wants to love everybody and does love everybody uh and my love is not just like a acceptance of them and that's what i felt like i was doing mm. i am tolerating i tolerate you you're very wrong and you're gonna burn in hell but I'll tolerate you being around me for mm. this hour or whatever. Not, I actually want to care about you and your well-being, your children. And, and so for me, I'm like, if we, if we are in fact all God's children, uh, and I'm supposed to seek the good of the city that I'm in, mm. the <coughs> excuse me, how do I do that the way I was living, which was just my tribe? It was just people who agreed with me mm. and thought like me i didn't want to do that and so we include people who disagree sure. for me right um i don't have to walk with you necessarily but i'm not going to give up on you or quit especially if i think what you're doing is very very wrong you're gonna have to deal with me trying to come around and be like hey man that's not loving that's my way of loving you now if you tell me you don't feel love from that we can work that out but that's Faith for me says people can change, people are redeemable, no matter how bad they have been, they have an opportunity to, ch to change and to be good and to do good. And we shouldn't give up on them just because, you know, they put out a stupid tweet or live dumbly for a long time. I mean, I, I hurt a lot of people's feelings and said some really offensive things mm, in, same. The, in the name of love, yeah. you know, just a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, and if those people were like, there's no hope for him, it's like, well, where would I be? Uh, so that's, I don't know, that's kind of the answer to my, it, it informs and influences every decision I make. Right, yeah. Last question is a hypothetical. All right. Someday, for some odd reason, when you die, Yeah. which hopefully is a long, long time from now, yes, lots but, of work to do, uh -huh. but you're gonna die. Yeah, we're gonna die. For some odd reason, I'm giving your eulogy. Mm. All of your family, your friends, the people you manage, everybody in the we, the we family, the we society, everybody's there. And they're both mourning and celebrating your life. And I get to give your eulogy. Mm -hmm. What do you hope, in a few sentences, what do you hope that I will say Ooh. on that day? So you're going to, I, I bullshit you not, your wife sent me an invitation to a birthday party one time for you. And... One of the lines she said in there stuck out with me. And I said, I hope people say that about me when I die. Mm. It says, you know my husband loves fiercely. And I was like. She said that? Yeah. Oh, boy. And I was I like, never knew that. Yeah. It was I know a, a birthday party you're talking yeah, about, but I never knew that. I couldn't. I, I was like, 
One, I hope that's said about me. It's like Kareem loved fiercely and was determined. I hope you can say how many millionaires are in here because you knew Kareem. Mm. I hope you can say how many people of color are millionaires because of Kareem. Mm. I hope you can say um, he loved his family. He gave, I want to die wrung out. And I hope that you could say that. Like he utilized every gift, every minute that he had to be as influential and as, pack, as impactful for the sake of others as w- was possibly, you know, able to by him. Um, so if, if those things can be said that I love fiercely, that people are like generationally well off because of their connection to me, both, you know, both mainstream and minority culture, um, and that it was obvious that I cared about others more than myself, I will be, I'll be so grateful and so happy. Um, Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a good legacy. Th- that's what I, that's all I want. Yeah. That's all I want. I want my friends, families to be fine for a long time. Yeah. Where they're in dream mode. I don't know. And I'm sorry to take this on a little tangent. No, no, go for it. My, my thing right now is what people don't understand is like my friends and family, we don't get to dream. We're trying to survive. Survive. Right? Not thriving, surviving. Literally, like, I, people, I have people who are like getting texts from their landlord, like, you have to move in the next 20 days because we're selling the building. Uh, we know you were going to this school, but the funding's cut so your kid can come here. Even though you paid thousands and thousands of dollars to go to the school, you can't go here anymore. I don't want anybody who's connected to me to have to go through that. I want my children to be able to say, you know what? I want to look at a problem in the world and try to attack it. Not, I want to try to figure out what I'm going to eat next. That's where I want my people to go. Um, and so that's what I'm working towards. And so that's kind of, you know, ask me in 10 years, it may be a little different, but I highly doubt it. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I yeah. think you're spot on. Yeah. It's going to take you the rest of your life to accomplish. Oh, absolutely. FYI, you know that. Yep. I love it. I love it too, man. Where can people go? What do you want people to f- go look and f- what do you want people to go search for after this? Yeah. Um, about you, about we, whatever. Give give us some social media handles. Give us some websites. So our website is weapparel.co. Instagram is weapparel.co. Twitter is weapparel underscore co. And I think Facebook is weapparel.co. So weapparel.co will get you a lot of places. Um, we haven't even launched any of the other things. Like we're going to launch a full clothing line in 2018. Right now we just want everybody in the black we tea like just yeah. the pictures black white asian indian mexican like all everybody gay straight it doesn't matter it's all of us tyranny hatred oppression affects everybody you know uh a threat to injustice anywhere is a threat to injustice everywhere um so that's right now but in 2018 we're going to launch some more offerings in terms of clothing we have uh Two artists you can check out, Dwayne Reed and 1K Few, who signed to Reach Records. Dwayne Reed is a teacher doing incredible things in the world of education. Uh, so go check out his. He's the one that had those viral videos? Yeah, yeah. I managed I him, too. I love those. Um, I love those. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, he has some stuff coming out. I can't say with who yet, but we have oh some pretty cool educational projects coming. And it's just exciting. We just, we just yeah, come, come support, even if you just follow us and just watch what we're doing for a while. Because in the next five years, I hope that... Um, we're inspiring and, and funding even more people to do projects that change the world. And I hope you know you come join us for the ride. I love it. Kareem, thanks for joining me hey, today. Man, thank you, man. We I just pounded it. our fist. We just pounded. We just pounded. <laughs> I hope you can use it with all the noise. <laughs> we'll make it work. All right, cool. Bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining Kareem and me for our conversation today. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was impactful. I know it was for me. I was grinning the whole time we were having that conversation because there were so many truth bombs. There's so much passion in his life. He's done so much, accomplished so much, and has sacrificed so much for the people around him. He Again, he gives all the dams, and that's very evident. You can follow we on Twitter at weapparel underscore co or on Instagram at weapparel.co. You can also follow Kareem on Twitter at Kareem underscore Manuel on Twitter and on Instagram 
at Kareem Manuel. So a little confusing, but if you if you search for We of Peril or Kareem Manuel on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook, you'll find them. And it's weapparel.co is the website. Go check it out. Get a shirt. I have one. I wear it at least once a week. I love sharing it. And people ask me all the time what, what it's about. Why the big we with the period? And I get to tell them because we are the ones that we're waiting for. No more excuses. No more waiting. Let's go. You can follow me at Nick Lapar everywhere and at Let's Give a Damn everywhere. I'd love to keep up with you. We would love to keep up with you and share more and more about what we're doing. And if you like the podcast, as always, leave us a review, share it with a friend, screenshot it and put it on your social media so people can see that you're listening to it. And if you're up for it, we actually got one more patron on Patreon this week, uh, patreon.com forward slash let's give a damn. You can send a few dollars our way a month that helps us make more podcasts. That's all for this week. I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Go give some dams this week, my friends. I love you. Can't wait to hang out with you one week from today on the podcast. Bye for now.